Yes, a very pleasant good morning, children. So today we are going to start the new chapter that is birth, and it's written by A. G. Cronin. Basically, this chapter has been extracted from the book The Citadel. So here in this chapter, the writer is basically talking about a medical miracle, uh, which happens in the life of a doctor, and of course the uh, you know the people, the person who is the beneficiary of this medical miracle is. a family who had been expecting a baby for the last 20 years and today they got the baby but it was born lifeless but the uh, will power knowledge and uh, you know the positive spirit okay the uh, undefeatable spirit of the doctor makes that still born baby gets revived so it was all because of the efforts of the doctor it was all because of his determination and it was all because of the knowledge he had and of course the will to put that knowledge into practice okay sometimes what happens like we give up before the before putting in our efforts so that is also there in the story like there is a midwife and uh, when the child would be born still born uh, she would like without actually uh, undergoing much into the details she would consider it a dead child and would put it under the bed on sodden that is wet newspapers considering it to be dead but the doctor would not only uh, consider it to be you know, you know worthy of becoming alive but also makes him revive and is able to restore the family happiness okay to the family members so what this chapter is about it's about the medical miracle which is because of the doctor and which doctor not a very experienced doctor not a seasoned an old doctor but a youngster the one who has been just a fresher from the medical field so that person you know the fresher from the medical field you know he enters this medical uh, profession and is an assistant to edward page okay so some, some renowned doctor edward page this doctor uh, the one whom we will see in this chapter you know uh, he will be uh, he will be his attendant he will be his you know assistant so one evening after he had a very uh, you can say unpleasant evening with his uh, girlfriend christine basically let me introduce you with the names also here the doctor's name will be andrew manson okay so when he will be coming back in the evening after a tiff after a dispute or a quarrel with his beloved christine when he was coming back home after having a you can say quarrel or dispute with his beloved christine when he reached home at about midnight it was around 12 o'clock okay when he was like number 1 he had spent the whole day in the hospital as medical assistant to edward page then he had uh, spent the evening with christine and there he might have had a quarrel with her so number 1 he was already exhausted because of his day in the hospital or in the clinic then he had uh, you know uh, he had he was mentally you know tensed mentally upset because of fight with his beloved christine and then it was midnight okay you can imagine body uh, physically also one is already exhausted at this stage and secondly he was emotionally also upset and when he reaches home at about that kind at about midnight then he finds that his uh, uh, friend joe morgan he was waiting for him so why this joe morgan was waiting because he was his wife was expecting his wife his name, her name will be suzanne suzanne morgan was expecting a child and this child was very important for the this couple because they had been uh, waiting for the child they had been desiring for a child for the last 20 years so after the marriage of this couple after 20 years you know they this this couple was getting the child okay this time and it was very important joe morgan had high hopes on andrew and uh, he relied upon him and he wanted that only andrew manson should uh, take this case so andrew manson could say could not say no to joe manson uh, joe morgan and he 
and he went inside his house and picked up his uh, uh, bag and all and went accompanied him to his house so when joe M andrew manson reaches his house then he finds that uh, uh, suzanne morgan was lying and she was uh, like her labor pain had already started and uh, joe morgan had two more women with her one was suzanne uh, i mean suzanne morgan had two more women with her one was her own mother and the other was the midwife who are the midwives the midwives are the untrained nurses okay these midwives are very uh, you know they are very experienced they have knowledge just because of the experience they have otherwise if you say that professionally they are trained that is not so so midwives are professionally untrained but they are uh, considered knowledgeable because of the kind of experiences they have right so this jo suzanne morgan had two women with her one was her own mother and the other was a midwife so jo morgan was able to make out that there was still some time for the delivery to take place so he wanted to go back he wanted to go home and to get some uh, get fresh and all but this mother could make out that if the doctor would go home then maybe he would not come back very early as it usually happens with the doctors because it was night and maybe the doctor might feel like sleeping when he goes home so the mother didn't want that the doc doctor should go home so she offered him tea and uh, basically at the time the mother was observing the doctor's expressions so you people also might have seen that uh, when uh, somebody goes to the doctor uh, with patient then people keep on looking at doctor's face to see like what expressions he shows Uh, if the doctor would be showing very relaxing expressions and people are may able to make out like our patient is okay we don't need to worry but if the doctor is able to show the expression of a little uh, worry then relatives also become tensed so mother was doing the same thing she kept on looking at joe morgan's expressions and joe morgan at the time uh, when it was he had to wait for the delivery of suzanne morgan to take place she went to the kitchen and there he enjoyed a cup of tea which was offered by mother and then meanwhile joe morgan was lost in his own thoughts it was at that time in the kitchen when we are able to meet joe morgan personally so at that time we find out that joe morgan was very emotionally upset on that particular evening so on that but at that time you know he was thinking about two men one was the one one person uh, the one uh, who had been deceived by a uh, his wife you can say this uh, joe morgan he recalled somebody john, uh, john bramwell the one who loved a woman a lot and that woman deceived him he also thought about edward page his boss the one who uh, joe uh, that edward page who lived with his wife Uh, and he did not have very good relations with her because his wife edward page's wife she was uh, a bit ill natured and jo edward page was very unhappy with her and was living separately from his wife so jo morgan was thinking about the men those who married though or those who loved but were living unpleasant or unhappy lives so he was thinking uh, uh, about his own beloved christine but at least he was sure that his christine was not the kind of uh, was not either ill natured or would not be the kind of woman who would deceive him so he had faith in christine okay so from here uh, this kind of you know his introspection we are able to see the joe morgan like despite he uh, despite the fact like he was a little upset he was quite depressed with because of the fight with his uh, beloved but that depression that uh, emotional uh, upheaval did not make her undermine her beloved his beloved it's not that he started thinking that even christine is very bad she will also you know uh, ditch him he never ever thought in about christine that is uh, a true character right it's not that when you think uh, when you find negativity around you then you start finding negativity even in you and in your Uh, in your near and dear ones 
so anyways joe morgan was very upset and that was like clear from the kinds of you know think uh, emotions he had at the time and afterwards when he went to see susan morgan uh, it was uh, like a, it like dawn it was a, going to be about 3 or 4 o'clock the whole night he had spent and when it was about uh, when it was getting morning uh, dawn then he realized that susan morgan was ready for the delivery then uh, with great efforts the child was born but uh, it was a still born child you know what's a still born child it it is a dead child so the moment the delivery took place the moment he held the child in his hands he was like shocked he you know he trembled with horror because the child was uh, dead and instantly he wanted to attend the child but the that very instant he saw that even the mother needed attention if he would not attend mother then she might also die because her heart was sinking so then he handed the child to the nurse and he uh, gave all attention to the mother and mother at that time uh, her, her pulse was sinking and all then he gave a uh, uh, injection to the mother and all the whatever the right course of medicine it was to be done he did that in such uh, fast manner that was unimaginable for some one else so instantly uh, when he was able to give the required doses to mother the mother recovered her heart uh, got revived so the moment he realized that now mother is safe the instantly he asked the nurse to hand him over the child but the nurse at that time you know did something she committed a blunder uh, she uh, pointed out she gesticulated that the child is under the bed the doctor was shocked like how could she put the child under the bed and that also upon the sodden that is wet newspapers because the nurse had considered that the child was dead and she kept him un- underneath doctor wanted the child so he he himself knelt and took the child out from under the bed and held him in his hand and he saw that the child was fully formed like it was a well formed child with all eyes ears nose all parts of the body they were properly formed and uh, the way the child is child's face was looking uh, very white it was uh, he was able to make out that it was a case of asphyxia okay asphyxia is a case where the child uh, uh, got, got suffocated and because of suffocation uh, it had got more of carbon dioxide in its blood and uh, uh, it could not inhale oxygen at the time so that's why because of the asphyxia the child had become stillborn the doctor thought he recalled of an incident which he might have heard of in medical science earlier Uh, uh and that incident made, gave him an idea like he asked the nurse to bring uh two kinds of water one uh, uh, lukewarm water and the other cold water the nurse you know uh, was like shocked at doctor's uh, this kind of behavior the nurse the midwife wanted to convince the doctor that the child is dead not please don't uh, tamper with the dead body but the doctor never wanted to listen to her so what he did he asked the nurse he ordered her like bring me two kinds of water one hot and one cold and the water was brought into kind into basins so first what he did uh, he tried to give the he tried to put the water he tried to put this baby alternately in cold and hot water okay once he would dip the child in the hot water then he would dip the child in the cold water and eventually because of this uh, alterated alteration of the child in one and the other water he did this for about half an hour like a mad person and while doing this his own arms you know sleeves of his uh, of his dress you know they were they were like uh, dripping with water it was the month of uh, cold it was a very cold time season still he was sweating profusely so you can imagine like what kind of efforts he was putting in to revive the child but uh, despite his all efforts for about half an hour the child was he was heaving can you imagine with his uh, uh, with his, with his uh, efforts which were almost like a madman he was heaving he was breathing so fast but the child whom he wanted to hear breathing the child was not breathing 
So finally, he uh, uh, lay, made the child lie on the blanket and he tried to give him his own breath. So he tried to give him respiration from his own side and uh, then he uh, rubbed his chest and all. And uh, when he was about to give a last chance, then he thought like, let me give one more effort. Then uh, all of a sudden he realized that uh, the chest under his hand was, you know, switching that it was, you know, now moving. So that was something he actually wanted to see. And then he pressed the chest and all. And eventually he found that the child had started breathing. The child started crying. Okay. So the moment child started crying and the child started breathing, the doctor had a heave of, he had a sigh of relief and he handed over the child to the mother. And then he rushed out. Uh, and he told the family that they, he would pick up the bag later on and he just went off. And when he was going off, then it had it was almost morning. The people for the next day had started going on their work. So he had uh, not finished his previous day's work. So he was going back from the previous day's work, but yet there was a sense of achievement that he had done something. So what he had done? He had changed the, he had done a miracle in the field of medical. So that is what like uh, this kind of thing is a big deal for a doctor, especially a freshman. So he had done something great and he had done something worthwhile. So with this, the chapter would come to an end, leaving the readers keep pondering over like how come that a man can control death and birth. Isn't it? So the story I've told you in nutshell, and in this story, you might have been able to make out like, yes, it's about the medical miracle. It's about a fresher medical and a medical miracle by a fresher. And then his never giving up spirit. Okay. So never give up. That is what the theme is. And about keeping family and professional life, life, life separate. Sometimes we say like, I couldn't do well in my uh, in my work. I couldn't do well in my studies. I couldn't do well over there because of my personal problem. But the thing is like uh, the successful people try to keep their family and professional life separate. So it can be family and study life for you people. Okay, so you try to keep a balance between your own, own personal life and your, and your study life, student life. So this, the theme is quite, the beautiful chapter it is. So though the, so the birth chapter title of course, it revolves around the birth of a child and his revival. But at the same time, this chapter is also about the birth of a doctor. Okay, the doctor who could, uh, who could realize like how powerful or how, uh, you know, influential he is for the world. So, okay, now we can start reading the chapter. So here is a chapter in front of you. Now let's read. In this excerpt from the Citadel, <clears throat> Andrew Manson, newly out of medical school, has just begun his medical practice as an assistant to Dr. Edward Page in the small Welsh mining town of Blenby. Okay, in this excerpt, the Citadel, Andrew Manson, newly out of medical school, has just begun his medical practice as an assistant to Dr. Edward Page in the small Welsh mining town of Blenby. So the town is Blenby. It is here that, uh, uh, that Andrew Manson has started working as, an, as a fresher, right? As he's returning from a disappointing evening with Christine, the girl he loves, he's met by Joe Morgan. Joe and his wife, who have been married nearly 20 years, are expecting their first child. Though it was nearly midnight when Andrew reached Bringar, he found Joe Morgan waiting for him. So where is the house of this Andrew? It is in Bringar. It is at this place. So when he reached his home, he found that his Joe Morgan was waiting for him walking up and down with short steps between the closed surgery and the entrance of the house. At the sight of him, he, at the sight of him, the burly driller's face expressed relief. So who is a burly driller? 
it is this andrew uh, it is this joe morgan joe morgan has been described as burly driller burly's muscular with muscles okay so this uh, you know person you know he was uh, very relaxed to see andrew back hey doctor i'm glad to see you i've been back and forward here for the last hour the missus wants ye before time too so he was very happy to see this doctor and he told him that his wife missus that his wife wants ye so it was susan morgan actually he wanted who wanted that uh, andrew manson should be uh, taking her case okay and before time too what's the meaning of before time too that she is going to deliver the baby baby before time like it was going to be a premature delivery so children the deliveries which uh, take place before 9 months before this uh, you know uh, that those uh, deliveries are called as premature baby, uh, uh, deliveries and it is quite difficult for the doctors to save the premature children nowadays there are many you know techniques many um, medical science has really advanced a lot but at this time those kinds of uh, advancements had not come when this action when this you know incident took place so premature children could not be saved earlier okay now there are many uh, things there are many medical advancement is there but in those times it was not so so here is a case where the child has been uh, is going to be premature andrew abruptly recalled from the contemplation of his own affairs told morgan to wait so abruptly recalled from the contemplation of his own affairs so point is like when joe morgan told him that his wife was uh, uh, you know expecting and he wants that you should take her case then at that time andrew was actually lost in his own thoughts okay he was like lost he was like thinking what his own affairs but he was abruptly uh, interrupted from those thoughts and he listened to him then he told him to wait he went into the house for his bag then together they set out for number 12 blena terrace so this is the address of joe morgan the night air was cool and deep with quiet mystery usually so perceptive usually so perceptive andrew now felt dull and listless very important point children so andrew manson the doctor what is his biggest quality as a person he is very perceptive who are perceptive people who are able to perceive the things some children uh, some people you know they are able to make out what the other person has in his or her mind without letting him or her say anything okay the, those kind of people happen to be perceptive perceptive people perceive perceive is they are able to understand like what the other person has in her or her his or her mind okay so that so their senses work more than what they can even see or what can they even hear okay so andrew was very perceptive and in the chapter you people will see that actually uh, what is what is written over there that is true so andrew was basically very perceptive but now when it was midnight when he was uh, when he was very tired and all then he was feeling very dull and listless he was uh, appearing to be very dull he had no premonition that this night would prove that this night call would prove unusual still less that it would influence his whole future in blank very beautiful line so though it he was looking appearing to be totally dull and listless and he had no idea what is the, like premonition the uh, premonition is like when you are able to foresee the future when you are able to make out like uh, what will happen uh, because of what you are doing okay premonition is the intuition which tells you like what good or what bad is going to happen and at this time he had no idea like how miraculous this evening is going to be going to be there he could not make out like this evening is going to be uh, a turning point in his life he could not make out he did not have an idea that what he was going to do today was going to be a big chapter of his life and it would be influencing his whole future in blending got it 
the two men walked in silence sorry silence the two men walked in silence until they reached the door of number 12 then joe drew up short so when they reached the door of house number 12 then joe stopped joe joe did not want to go inside now i'll not come in he said and his voice showed sign of strain but man i know you'll do well for us so joe morgan told the doctor that he would not go inside but he has full uh, faith upon this man he said like i know that you will do uh, your best for us okay now you might have been able to make out like why doesn't that joe morgan go want to go inside he doesn't want to go inside because uh he is quite apprehensive as to what would happen to the to his wife or what kind of uh, you know, what would happen to their child so he was not sure whether the case would turn whether he would be able to have the child healthy one or not okay he was not very sure of the good things to turn up so he did want to go inside because we don't want to face the unpleasant things inside a narrow stair led up to a small bedroom clean but poorly furnished and lit only by an old lamp so inside what was the scene inside the room it is this now inside a narrow stair led up to small bedroom clean but poorly furnished and lit only by an oil lamp here mrs morgan's mother a tall gray haired woman of nearly 70 and the stout elderly midwife waited beside the patient watching andrew's expression as he moved about the room so now what happened the room you know where the bedroom where this uh, susan morgan was lying it was a poor it was clean room but poorly furnished okay there was only one oil lamp and here mrs morgan's mother who was a tall and gray haired woman of nearly 70 and a fat an elderly midwife they were waiting beside the patient watching andrew's expression as he moved about the room let me make you a cup of tea dr batch said the former quickly after a few moments so the former here is the mother so the uh, so mrs jo morgan's mother offered the doctor a cup of tea andrew smiled faintly he saw that the old woman wise in experience realized there must be a period of waiting that she was afraid he would leave the case saying he would return later so uh, the moment this mother offered the doctor a cup of tea the doctor as we have already read out was very perceptive he, he smiled uh, gently yeah, because he was able to make out like uh, this woman was offering him a cup of tea so that he would not go home so because she doesn't want that the doctor should leave the patient even for a minute okay so she wants that the doctor should be there only okay don't fret mother i'll not run away so she told the he told the mother he told that woman that don't worry i won't run away down in the kitchen he drank the tea which she gave him overwrought as he was what is overwrought overtired he was totally exhausted overwrought as he was he knew he could not snatch even an hour's sleep if he went home he knew too that the case here would demand all his attention a queer lethargy of spirit came upon him he decided to remain until everything was over so the doctor we i've already told you was very perceptive though he was extremely tired yet he knew that uh, he would not be able to sleep even for an hour if he goes home so and moreover the case was very critical it was not an easy case it was a very critical case from the point of view of mother as well as a child so he decided to give his whole time and energy to the case an hour later he went upstairs again noted the progress made came down once more right sat by the kitchen fire it was still except for the rustle of the cinder in the grate and the slow tick tock of the watch clock so when he observed that still there was some time he came back in the kitchen and sat by the fire it was total silence at that time only two sounds only three sounds rather were there one was a sound of the uh, of the you know fire which was coming from the grate fireside 
and second sound was the tick tock of the wall and there was one more sound no there was another sound the beat of morgan's footsteps another sound was that joe morgan was moving up and down in the in the street and that sound of his footsteps was also audible here so three sounds the sound of fire the sound of uh, tick tock of the clock and the sound of joe morgan's footsteps otherwise there was pin drop silence the old woman opposite him sat in her black dress quite motionless her eyes strangely alive and wise probing never leaving his face so the mother susan morgan's mother was constantly looking at her at him okay she was never missing a chance to observe him okay we'll read the chapter from here tomorrow okay let me just see the things